Hello, hello, hello. LaShawn Gary here with DreamBuildSuccess.com. I hope you're having a great day. If you have not heard about me, what I do, I teach women, entrepreneurs, med entrepreneurs, how to build multiple streams of income, how to leverage it with ideas. So I want you to do me a favor, introduce yourself, let me know who you are, what you're doing right now, what city, state, or country you're chiming in from, and invite your friends. Hello, say hello when you chime in. Um, guys, I'm so excited. I am on a little bit later tonight, but um, this week, catch me. I will be teaching uh, a couple different things, a couple quick announcements. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Grace and peace. Grace and peace. I hope y'all had a good day. How was your day? Did y'all go worship? Let me know. Um, but I'm so excited. Um, I have a couple different things going on. I'll be teaching a um, a class, a tax class um, at a ministry on this Wednesday. So, of course, if you don't know, uh, me and my husband, we own a, a business and we are in financial services, but we own a tax uh, service. So we're going, we love to go and uh, educate the body of Christ. So we're doing that. Hello, how are you? Grace and peace. So I have that. Um, I'll also be on the radio this Friday. So you definitely want to go to my website at LaShondaGary.com so you can stay connected. And on Saturday, I will be at uh, the, the Give, Give Back Bash with um, Pastor Patricia Cardinal. So shout out to her. So I have um, about three or four different things going on this week, but I'm so excited. I thank God for every opportunity and I'm humbled. Hey, everybody. I want to talk about new doors, new doors, new doors. Um, how many of you can say, hey, you know what? I'm expecting new doors. I'm expecting for God to really shift some stuff. And I'm going to um, go ahead and I have my YouTube channel as well on because, you know, not everybody, they are, not everybody's on Facebook, y'all. But I want you to grab a pen and a paper. Um, I'm going to give you some biblical principles, um, some real big strategies right now that can really help bless you and your family, that can really help you get to your next season. And if you believe that God is releasing you to a new door, um, or if you believe that God is releasing your family into a new door, um, or your ministry, you definitely want to tap in. I believe that this is a, a season where God is going to supernaturally um, start some things and, you know, God is allow. I believe that God allows certain things to happen. One, so He can really um, place the body of Christ in a in a blessed place, right? Sometimes God will allow things to happen, right? He will um, allow, like we well in the Word of God it talks about calamity, and it talks about going into deserts, into seasons of being barren. But I think uh, sometimes God will allow a few things. One, to catch our attention. Number two, God not only wants to catch the attention of, of, of his people, but also he wants to make sure and he, he asks us to sit with him. So if we want to consistently walk through open doors, hey, hey, uh, prophetess, how are you, woman of God? Hey, Dr. Uh, Dickerson, how are you? If we want to consistently walk into doors, if we want to consistently walk into new seasons, then are we praying? Are we fasting? Are we living holy? Are we really doing those things that we're supposed to do when it comes to our assignment, when it comes to the body of Christ, when it comes to the call of God on our life, when it comes to the mandate, when it comes to the mantle, when it comes to your kingdom assignment. I believe that, hey, Pastor, how are you? Pastor Andy, grace and peace, man of God. Listen, when it, when we talk about our assignments, when we talk about being kingdom leaders, can we really be kingdom leaders and really um, operate in, you know, when it comes to being dysfunctional and operating in a, a season and, you know, I'm just one of those. I believe that if we read the word, we live God's word, we should look like the word. That's me. Okay. I believe that, um, you know, even there, there are some seasons where God will allow you to go through certain things just to shake you up, just to allow you to go into your next season. There are some doors that some of you are standing at and you're saying, God, when am I going to enter the door? When am I going to have access granted to that door? And the Lord is simply waiting on you to say, you know what, daughter, son, just walk through the door. I've given you the key for the door, but because you're in fear, because you're operating in lack, because your mindset is not where it needs to be, you haven't walked through that door. And the truth be told that if God has allowed you to walk through a door out of a season and even at a time and a place when you were not ready to receive or walk under that fresh door or fresh mantle you will be displaced hallelujah there are some of you you're saying listen when is my opportunity i felt like i, I walked two seasons up then i walked three seasons back i know how that feels 
I've been there. Listen, I was on a street, parked there for a while. But then what God will do is he'll tell you, you know what, daughter, son, I'm proud of you. you he will reassure who already affirms in you. So what you have to do is you have to tap into that anointing. You have to really shift into that, that assignment and that call. And you have to really say, you know what, God, in your word, you said that I'd never lack another day of my life. You told me in your word, according to thy word, that I would never want, that I should eat the good of the land. Lord, that if I serve you, Father, listen, and there are some of you, because you are not willing to serve God, you're willing to go to an eight to five and in the truth be told, you never ask God if you're supposed to be at that eight to five, right? So the reason maybe you're you're feeling that that um what I like to call a good old fashioned butt whooping, right? What, 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 why, why are you feeling that? It's because you're out of order. You're out of place. You never ask God, God, is this where you want me to be? So what happens is you become depleted and you're wondering why you don't have enough strength to push through that door. You're wondering why you can't really, you know, um, shift that door open for others. The reason you can't do that is because maybe you haven't prayed about where you are right now. You know, I remember when I thought that the best that God could ever offer was when I was in corporate. You know, I never imagined that God would have really just just breathe on our businesses and really breathe on what he does with us in ministry marketplace ministry I you know I could have I never would have probably prayed it now I knew that God had a call in my life I knew that he had an assignment attached to me there are some of you you can run but you cannot hide you have a mark on you hallelujah there are some of you that have an assignment and when I when I talk about an assignment there is a target on you listen you can go into a place and you will never fit in you will always look different right like if you're one of those people that say, listen, woman of God, you're talking to me. I know I look different. I know that I have a different assignment. I know that I have a, a different a different anointing. I know that God has called me for such a time as this. I know that God, he's had my ministry hidden for a season. Listen, he had my children. Listen, he had He had my children hidden for a season. But I feel a great uh, tidal wave of fresh anointing coming on over on me and mine. Because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And, you know, it's amazing how... A a lot of times we can um, serve our flesh. You know, I'm, I'm a realist, y'all. And uh, I believe that holiness is the only way in that um, that is your that is your divine way to your next opportunity. So when you look at uh, what God wants to do in you and how are you going to open up that new door? Um, I was praying and I said, God, you know, as I prepare um, on Thursday, I will uh, be teaching about issues. What it looks like we have more issues than Vogue. Okay, so I want you to chime in. But basically, I, I was reading and, and, and really studying and the Lord gave me a word. He said, daughter, what I'm going to do in this next season is there are some people, they I have them at the door, but because it was a door that they already passed up. Listen, some of you guys is... Listen, this this how I see. Some of you guys, there's so many doors that you have to get through to get through to that next season, right? Some doors are smooth transitions. Some doors may feel like they're like storms, like hurricane fives, right? You know, I live in the South. We deal with hurricanes, you know, um, and it seems like it doesn't matter where you are in the East United States. Um, the Bible is being, uh, you know, revealed and it's being a field uh, right now. But when you think about your open door opportunities, you think about... Um, those doors that God maybe told you to go back and now I'm not saying you got to go to every door. What I'm saying is discerning the spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you can say, listen, look, I'm ready for my open door. I'm ready to get um, aligned. I'm ready to be in my assigned place. I'm ready to really keep my family on fire. And I heard this word um, to induct. I heard God said that I'm about to induct the saints, the body into a new door that is going to induct them into a new season, a greater opportunity, a greater organization of influence. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying any occult stuff. Hear me. Hear me well. OK, what I am saying is that God is looking for a delegation of diplomats who will be kingdom ambassadors. There are some of you. You have a fresh mantle. You have your you. You know, there are some of you you're saying, listen, I've been waiting for my next season. I know that some people know me and it's like right when I get there. I've been there. I've, I've, I know what it feels like to be in a champion season and almost get there and then drop the baton. Y'all know I was a track athlete. OK, so so what happens, LaShonda? And how do I get past the pain? Right. Because some of you, you keep practicing that pain from your last season. You keep practicing those issues from, you know, from, from the things of old. 
I have to share this, y'all, real quick to my business page, my team. Thank God for a team, dream team. Shout out to the dream team. But there are some of you, you're saying, you know what? I need that promotion financially, but can God really trust you to do what you're supposed to do when you get those finances? And when you get what you're supposed to receive from God, will you forget who God really is? You know, that it's dangerous to be in a place and really be in a blessed place and to forget who God is in your life. Right. You don't want to be you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that girl. You do not want to be that guy to get your blessing and forget how you got it. Forget how what it took to get, you know, and I want to tell you something that can maybe encourage uh, a few of you. It encourages me. Right. One thing that I've learned is that getting it is easy, but keeping it. Now, that's where you have to really be transformed in your mindset. Do you hear me? receiving it and getting it is easy i tell entrepreneurs all the time i tell people all the time you know i teach fine i teach a lot of fun about money and i'm teach i teach about wealth building and how to you know uh really tap into our kingdom wealth and there's a different there's a different arenas let me tell you something there's a difference between money and kingdom wealth right we're talking about kingdom currency and so i told i i can i tell the saints all the time you know what you can really you know, get your finances. You can really, you know, tap in and, and uh, a dope dealer can sell money, right? Like, you can go have a garage sale and, and make some quick change. But if you want kingdom wealth, if you want to really make some money, listen, you got to tap into that fresh anointing. You got to make sure that your hands are clean. You have to make sure that your heart is pure, right? And you cannot forget the big head when God gives you one dollar too many. Because, you know, the Lord gives and he takes it. Could it be that God wants to do something in you and maybe the reason God hasn't opened that door yet is because really you haven't allowed him to induct and really transform your life from the inside out? You never want to look, you know, like I remember growing up, y'all, and you know, y'all don't leave me out there. I remember we had this little ladies and they would be like, y'all have to, y'all have to wear pantyhose. You know, I'm old school. So, you know, y'all have to do this. Y'all have to do that. You know, and I, and one day I was thinking, what well, I'm doing this, but every time, you know, um, I look around, you mean, you know, like, you know, I would think about that. You know, she may have meant right. She was trying to do her best, right? It takes a village. But then I'm like, but the way you're telling me is rude, right? So you have to think about it. There are some of you, you know what? God can really have you primed up for a blessing. There are some of you that God can say, you know what? I'm about to bless them. I'm about to blow her mind. I'm about to impart spiritual gifts into him. I'm about to open up a door of influence. But then when you get to that door of influence and you get around people that have prestigious titles, are you going to back down? Are you going to operate in fear? Will you not say what thus said the Lord? Will you say, you know what? Woe is me. I, I'm, I, 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 I don't have everything they have, but if God called you to the carpet and if God, he's already raised you up for that, he's already equipped you for it. What you have to do is you have to sit down the self in you and you have to allow the anointing of you to rise up and stand. Amen. Amen. So what are you talking about, LaShonda? I want to tell you that I believe that this is a season and I want to encourage some of you because you may be on furlough. You may be on shutdown, but this is a season, body of Christ. And you know what? It's it's amazing because I had a, a tax class this weekend and I was talking and, you know, I felt like John the Baptist because I've been preaching the same message and thing for the same like four or five years. Anyone know, knows me knows I'm a I'm a, a forerunner for entrepreneurs. I'm one of those like, let's take charge. Amen. And I and I've been telling the body of Christ for years. I felt like John the Baptist. You know what? Create, create, create. You know, this is a season where you don't need a second job. What you need is to invest in your destiny. You need to really tap into right now what your dream look like. What does your plan look like? Oh, I wish I had my. The, today, you know, I sat down and I wrote up like almost another 90 day curriculum. You know, I'm in the middle of um, my shift uh, mentorship program. If some of you don't know, I have a, a mentorship initiative that I, that God allowed me to go ahead and release. And so I'm, I'm working up curriculum, showing people blueprints, showing them how to really tap into their gifts, their talents. You know what? Because you can go to eight to five, you can work 80 hours, you can work 120 hours and you can get laid off. Right. Or, you know, when when you are tapped in, you know, and hear me, hear me. Well, I have family. I have friends, 
you know, and, and ministry uh, peers that are going through this furlough and shutdown, right? But what I've encouraged them to do right now, and I've given, I've sold substance, right? So I really told them, you know what? This is the time to make sure you always have a plan. You have to have a plan because, you know, truth be told, when I was laid off, I didn't have a plan. I just knew I didn't want to be broke, right? I knew I had bills to pay, and that's real for a lot of people. So what you want to do right now, men and women of God, you want to go ahead and sharpen that iron. You know what? If you have people in your life that are governed in areas, that they, they are experts in areas, this is a season where you can tap into that. Right. This is a season where instead of sitting on the sidelines and crying, right, that you create something that you go ahead and go get your license or your LLC or DBA and things like that. Hallelujah. OK, so let's talk about iron. Let's talk about the strength of iron, because see, some of you, you're you're looking at a door and you can't see the door because it's a glass door. Right. And you're worried about where's the handle when God says shatter the door. Do you hear me? There are some of you that are looking at doors and you're wondering, when is my breakthrough going to come, right? And the door is a glass door, right? And literally, if the truth were told, all you have to do is walk up to it and shatter the glass door. Sometimes you don't need to touch the door handle. You got to beat the door down. Sometimes the door could be the door you passed at, passed by because it looked like it was a small door. It wasn't a great door. Hallelujah. See, and that's, and that's why you have to look with the, the eyes of, of discernment. You have to look at the eyes with God vision, right? I tell, I tell um, you know, my mentees all the time, you can have a God idea or a good idea. You only need one God idea. I have a private mentoring group, and on my mentoring group, I gave them a tour of one of my offices. And I shared with them because I was really led, really, really led, um, and I felt it in my spirit to share with them that it was one word that God allowed this to manifest, right? It was that $200 laptop and a word from God. That's it. So sometimes you don't need you don't need anybody you don't need nobody to help you. Listen, you don't need nobody to push the door down for you. You need to bust the door down. Right. You need to walk into that door. You have to say, listen, I was born for this time, for this season. I've been set apart for this. I've been raised up for this. I have a fresh mental for this. I have a fresh prophetic word for this season. God has called me to the throne. Listen, my last season of lack is over and I'm walking into my new season. That last season that I walked out of where I was begging people, people where I was robbing Paul to pay Peter. Listen, I was asking for people for opportunities. I was asking for platforms. Listen, that was that last season where I was just laying uh, in, in this place and, and running, ripping and running at that place. That was that, that season is over. But the season I'm walking in, listen, I don't need a door handle. I'm literally going to shatter that door open. I'm going to walk through that door with the eye of discernment and when I get there listen I'm not going to forget what I what I left but what I'm going to say is that you know what listen I cannot be selfish but right now I have to go after what what is what is called to me hallelujah and what God has placed in my in my hands and my heart in this season because what will happen is if you perfect those things that are concerning when it comes to the assignment, what happens is God will raise you up where you can become a disciple and create disciples. Do you hear me? After you weather the storm, after you receive your deliverance, after you've been able to be perfected in the area, God will allow you to then raise up other champions. God will allow you then to raise up other, other ambassadors. God will allow you then to duplicate your success. God will allow you then to raise up ministers and ministry leaders and, and people in the, in the workplace. Sometimes opening the door and twisting that handle just takes too long. See, I've been there. Well, I did. I listen. I was at the point where I said, "Listen, I don't have time to turn the door handle. I need somebody to open up the door before I even get to the door. Open that door for me. Listen, I'm about to run full throttle. That's it." And this is a season where anything is possible. Anytime you see something in the natural get locked up, 
y'all better hear me. Anytime in the natural something is locked up and it's capped and it's controlled, hallelujah, you have to see it in the supernatural and say, okay, Lord, we believe that you allow certain things to happen. If this is you, God, I believe that this will be the season where not only are you going to unlock the hidden mysteries, hallelujah, the things that I've been praying about that I have not yet received revelation about, the things that I've been reading in the word of God that I haven't received revelation about, those are the things in intercession that you're going to, listen, allow me to get in, to tap into. That's the type of God we serve. Somebody say, that's my type of God. Listen, that's the type of God I serve. Listen, I'm not begging anybody in this season. Look, what I will do is tap into my anointing. I paid a price for what I'm walking in. Listen, my children have paid a price. My ministry has paid a price. Listen, my family has paid a price. But right now, what we're going to do right now, we are literally going to tap into our kingdom assignment. We're going to tap into our anointing. We're going to shift some things supernaturally, and we're going to let allow God to be God in our life the big God that means that we put ourselves on the on the shelf and we allow God to be the orchestrator of this season you never want to walk into a door that can send you down and into a desert my God my God listen you never want to walk through that you don't want to go through that listen some of you have been through some seasons over and over and over and over and over again aren't you tired of that Aren't you exhausted of it? Listen, this is a season and this is a time where God wants to do a Habakkuk 2 in your life. He says, write the vision, make it plain. Do you hear me? God is saying, write it out, daughters. Write it out, sons. Let me show you. Let me show them and let me show what, what, what I want to do in your lives. Hallelujah. I praise the living God. I praise God because he's worthy. There are some of you, you're concerned more about not looking. You're looking at the door and you're looking at the peephole, wondering who is it? And the Lord is saying, come on in. I'm ready for you. That And that's you have to understand that. There are some of you, because you walked through the door and you hit failure, because you walked through that last door, because it didn't look like it was supposed to. You walked through that last door. It didn't feel like it was supposed to. Listen, it was a door and maybe it was a door where you said, listen, they slammed the door in my face. They won't even let me in. Why are you worried about another man's door when God has given, given you the kingdom ability to, listen, decree and declare a thing, speak it into existence and watch it manifest? Watch it manifest. It's going to take some real courage. Right? It will take some real courage. I come to build your faith. That's all it is today. Building your faith. Letting you know that the things that were not possible, they are possible. Hallelujah. The things that you did not believe could be done, could get done. The things that man said could not happen for you and yours. Oh, yes. Tonight is the night. Today is the day. Somebody say, I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm ready for that supernatural release. I'm ready for that shift. I'm ready for that new mantle. I'm ready for that new assignment. I'm ready for that new revelation. I'm ready for God to just do what he wants to do. I want God to do what he wants to do right now. Anything is possible. And what happens is, sometimes when you walk up to the door, you get distracted by the floor mat. You don't need to worry about what's under your feet. And if it's under your feet, that means you've already conquered it. Sometimes what happens is, we get so worried about a defeated enemy, or you can, get, you can be concerned, and I won't even say we. Listen, let me watch that language. Because remember, our language does not have a sense of humor. It only does what we tell it to do. So sometimes you may feel like, Oh, what's under my feet? You cannot be concerned what's under your feet. If it's under your feet, that, that means you already treaded upon it. You've already walked on it. Listen, that means you've already triumphed off, over it. Listen, that means that you that the Lord has already consecrated you in that thing and that you have a blood-born right, that you have been graced in the area. That means that if you're graced in the area, that God has literally raised you up in that area. That means that you've been perfected in that area. What are you saying, LaShonda? There comes a time in your life, in your season, where you have to look at a floor mat and walk right past it. That could be the season where maybe there was um, something that happened that maybe got you discouraged. I've been there. 
when I was diagnosed. I thought, okay, I know I'm not going to die, but Lord, I'm, I'm, you, God, I thought that was the prime of my career, right? I thought, well, Lord, I'm an intercessor. Come on, Father. And what will happen is God will, he, listen, when, when that, uh, that assignment, and I call it an assignment because the Lord, what he wanted to do, I, he allowed me to be perfected in healing and deliverance. See, some of you, you're taking it personal that maybe you have a, a ailment or an ailment in your body. I believe that the Lord comes to heal you. And maybe that open door is your healing. The sick part, the parts that nobody knows about that still needs to be healing. He wants to give you beauty for ashes. He wants to give you virtue for all those, those fights that you had to have. And if you don't transform your mind, you'll be fighting an invisible enemy called you. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the glory. Y'all, I feel the glory. So what you want to do is you want to say, Lord, you know what? I know that you have not given me a spirit of fear in this season. I know that you've raised me up. And I know that even now you're invoking. What is an invoking? That means there is a summon to help support an appeal. There are some of you that God is literally invoking and calling upon the angels to come sit with you. My goodness. There are some of you that are looking at this shutdown. And you're saying, listen, we're never going to make it out of this. Th this is it. The devil is a liar. God will ne never allow anything like this to happen if he did not want to bless the body. I'll give you an example. I'll prove my point. And I'm not even, I'm going to give you just regular terminology. If you, you know, some of us were very versed in the Bible, right? But in 2008, when there was the, the, the housing market crash, right? Everybody, everybody knows that. There were a lot of people that really received a lot of abundance that walked into greater opportunity to supernatural wealth. A lot of people, their businesses flourished. A lot of people didn't know that they could be a business owner or entrepreneur or a marketplace leader. Listen, some people went back to school, got their degrees. Some people got post-secondary degrees, right? What happens is it should invoke you. It should summon you to either turn your heart, shift your mindset, shift the way you think, shift the way you sow, shift the way you serve, or shift the way you look at things. Hallelujah. My God, do you hear me? There are some of you looking at your situation and saying, God, how am I going to make it out of this? Lord, I know you're great. God, I know you're amazing. But Lord, how, how are we going to get blessed out of this? And God really wants to bless you. It does, not, it does not please our father for his sons and daughters to be hurting, to, be, to look like they're crippled. It does not please him. But what he does want, he wants you to have a good report, right? He really wants you to not operate in fear. And when, you, when you're in fear, what you're telling God is that my thoughts don't line up with your thoughts. Because in your thoughts, you said that I would be sober. You know, that I would, I would operate with good reports. That I would think on the things of you, Father. That I would think positive. And I would not let negative Nancy come in my life. Or, or, or petty Patsy come and sit with me. Right? But what I would do is think on you. I would press towards the higher call. Right. And I press towards the mark of the higher calling. I would go towards those things of high. I would go towards that calling. I would really activate that assignment in my life. And, you know, I, I'm always really looking at God. What is the sign that you want us to see? What is the sign that you, you know, you want me to tap into? And this year we've, dec de we've decreed and declared that this, our, our word for the year for Dreamville success has been shift. That God is doing a new thing, right? He's shifting some stuff. What does that mean? He's shifting our finances. He's shifting our prayers. He's shifting our sanctification. He's shifting our mantles. He's shifting our anointings. He's fast forwarding those things that concern us. He's uh, shifting our prayers. He's shifting healings. He's shifting, listen, he's shifting marriages. He's shifting relationships. He's shifting some things in your life. If you receive that shift, put shift in the comments. Come on. 
I'm listen, God, I'm allowing you to shift, shift some things in me and my family. Right. And I believe that this is going to be one of the greatest seasons in your life. I believe that God is really going to do something supernatural for you. And for some of you, you're saying, OK, what are you talking about? I'm talking about, you know what? If you're at a season where you say, look, this is my season where I want to be whole. I want to deal with those issues when I was a child. I want to deal with when I lost my job. I want to deal with literally when she walked out on me. I want to deal with why I didn't get that promotion. I want to deal with really finally why my ministry is not flourishing, why my faith is not growing, why I still pop off, why am I still frustrated, right? I want to look at that. And God will just say to you today, you know what? Turn your heart towards me. And if you turn your heart towards God, I'm telling you, I know that some great things are going to happen. If you believe great things are about to happen, put greater things. Great things are happening. Greater things. Listen, I don't care if you're a coach, if you're a mentor, if you're an educator, if you're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're a dentist. Listen, you could be the, listen, the teacher's aide. You could say, listen, LaShonda, real talk, I'm unemployed right now. Look, real talk, I'm shut down right now. Real talk, I'm on furlough. I'm talking to you. I believe that God is about to shift you. I believe that you're about to walk into the greatest season in your life. And if you believe that, I want you to do what's called a prophetic act and put that in the comments. If someone needs some encouragement, share this with them. Thank you for sharing this. I believe it's going to really bless some people. I believe that there are some people that are connected to you that need a breakthrough. I believe that there are some people that are connect, uh, connected to your family. Some people are waiting on you to just say yes. I believe that there are some people that are really uh, waiting on you to walk into that new opportunity. I believe that even some of you, y'all, I feel the presence of God. There are some of you that you, you, you're you uniquely made. And when I say uniquely made, that you are just not just anybody. You're, you're not a regular person, right? You have that special um, ornate ability to really encourage other people. You know what? Back in the day, we called it the class clown. But I believe that even now, God is raising up class clowns to be great influencers. I believe that God is going to put you in a place and he's going to put your name, your name on, on, the, mind, on the mind of someone of influence. And they'll say, you know what? What about such and such? Have we looked at her? Have we looked at him? Suddenly. That's how quick it will come. That's how quick it will manifest. Suddenly, God will release you. And suddenly, you can literally go from $1 to six figures. Suddenly, you can go from your deathbed to destiny. Suddenly, you can go from being divorced to really living out and having a full-fledged marriage that brings you joy. Listen, suddenly, a bad report from the doctor and a shift happens. Suddenly, God is going to do it. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Listen, and I want to give you a testimony. When I first got called into ministry, I didn't even know that I was supposed to be a, a minister. I just knew I love God, right? And if I would have stopped when I was told that I should not preach, if I was told that you're a woman, you cannot teach God's word. You're a woman, you cannot do this. Imagine how many people would have been hindered. Imagine how many people would not receive their miracles. How many people would not receive their, their, you know, have their testimonies, right? Because if you allow the enemy or people that, and you know, and maybe it wasn't my time. That's between God, you know, God and them. But I know that, that God has given me an assignment. So I want to challenge you to do something for God and do something different to get some different results. If you want to receive greater, you got to do some different things. Right? Enough is enough. Somebody put enough is enough. Enough is enough. Right? Enough, enough, enough is enough on hating on people. The only people that hate on people are people that don't know who they are. If you don't know who you are, you will hate on somebody. If you do not know who you are and who you're called to be, who you're called to impact, then what you'll do is you'll compete and you'll become what I like to call a witch in disguise. Right? Hallelujah. My God. You'll become a witch in disguise. My goodness. What do you mean, LaShonda? What are you talking about? A witch in disguise or a hater or a troll or a warlock. Listen, and that and that and listen, when you don't know who you are and you hating on somebody, listen, you don't have to hate. If you tap into the anointing, if you pray, if you fast, God will reveal the real you to you too. Come on, somebody. Enough is enough. Jehovah Rapha, 
God is a provider. He is, he's going to be your very present help in this time. When you're open doors, as those doors continue to look open and as those doors continue to impact and as God allows you to really walk into that new anointing, as a God allows you to really shift some things, what's going to happen is you're going to learn who you really are. Sometimes God will allow you to go through some stuff because he says, listen, I want more of your attention. There are some of you, and, and, and maybe this, you know, hey, you can say amen or you can say ouch. You've experienced that, and you've said, listen, this is a season where I've experienced so much trauma, so much chaos, I don't even know what to do. But sometimes God will allow certain things to happen so he can keep your attention. I heard a, a pastor say one time, some people don't like peace, <laughs> Right? But don't be that person. Do not allow that label to, to come find you. Right? You want to be the one to say, you know what? I operate in peace. I live in peace. My family is in peace. My prayers are peaceful. Listen, my prayers go and they create peace. Listen, my children are at peace. The school is in peace. My workplace is at peace. Listen, my, the people of influence that I am assigned to, they are in peace. Everything about me is peace. I've been created to create great impact and bring peace to others. That's, that's, that's what can really happen. Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm excited. I feel the presence of God. I want to I wanna read to you this scripture. Amen. Y'all know I got, listen, you know it get real when, you, when your girl got all her, listen, I got my study Bible out and I took my notes, right? I want to share this with you. Listen, there are some of you, I believe that God has really raised you up for such a time as this. And if he's raised you up for this time, he sets you apart. When God sets you apart, what he's saying is, is something different about you. So if you're someone that maybe, you know what, listen, I'm in a, a place right now where I'm quiet, where I'm at peace. I'm not doing a lot of, of, of drama right now. I'm not going to be the drama king. I will not be the drama queen. I'm going to really focus on First things first. Okay? If that is you, then I applaud you. But that's not everyone's story. Right? And so what you have to do is you have to get to the point where you can duplicate what you've already been created to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 13. I want to read this to you. Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Some of you, and I hear this in the spirit, you, you feel like maybe the Lord forgot about you. Maybe he forgot about your ministry. Not everybody can be the mega ministry. And let's, let's be real, right? You can't handle the 30 that you got. Okay? Let's be real. Not everybody can really be, be assigned with that type of a mantle. Okay? And maybe it's because God has you in a hidden place. And God is saying, I'm perfecting some stuff because what happens is what you will learn is when you when you are raised up as with major influence, what happens is you have to make sure you know who you are. You have to know who you are, who you've been called to. And then also you cannot forget about God. It's human nature to want to probably do it by yourself, to do it on your own. But it's not God's will for your life. And, and the Lord, he wants in all your ways to acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. When's the last time you allow God to create your blueprint? When's the last time you ask God, God, what do you want me to do about this? God, how do you want me to address this situation? God, I know that this is not working out. And I'm not pleased with this situation. What do you want me to say in, in this situation? Who do you want me to bless in this situation? God, do you want me to walk through this door? Is this a God door? Or, th or is this door going to be a trap of the enemy? Is this door going to send me back to my old ways? Is this door going to send me back to a soul tie? Hallelujah. I'm going to give y'all a testimony. I remember um, I was engaged and it's um, really fu it's funny now. Praise God. <laughs> but I'll never forget that when I was really thinking, okay, God, you showed me the sign. And like literally, he showed me the sign. You've been there. Don't act funny. Right? And if maybe you haven't. But that was just what I went through. Right? I mean, it was so, 
it was so bad. I'm like, oh gosh, if I stay here, even, even the girl, you know, they all gonna think I'm a fool, right? So without saying too much, cause you know, I minister to everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. But looking at that situation and looking back at it, if I didn't know who I was and if I didn't know who God called me to be, I would have just allowed that foolishness to recycle in my life. Some of you have not experienced your breakthrough because you are still going through that season and you're allowing that season to determine where you should live in, reside in, operate out of, how you should really, you know, shift into people's lives, how you should bless people. Listen, that's the season you're in and you're wondering, God, what do I need to do? What do I need to say in this? God, how do I need to really change this situation up? Right? And how do I get free from this? It's because you, listen, you have not got delivered from that season. You haven't been delivered from that stronghold. Oh, come on, somebody. I said I wasn't going to get on here howling today. To not today. But if you have not, if you're not my one of my friends on Dreamville Success, I want you to go to dreamvillesuccess.com or LashondaGary.com. Hallelujah. Right. And you wonder why you keep going back to one. But you but you're really asking God, God, when are you going to send that Boaz? When is the Proverbs 31? I've been looking for a Lord. Is she the one? And when God shows you the sign, you ignore the sign because of your flesh. Right. There's no good thing in our, in our flesh. There's no good thing. You have to literally crucify your flesh every day. What do you mean, LaShonda? That means that you have to live holy every single day, right? You have to really say, you know what? I need to fast. I need to go and consecrate. Consecrate is another word for living separated, living celibate, living holy, living set apart, living sanctified, right? And if you're not saved, this is a good time to be saved, right? And you can say, listen, I'm in a backslidden state right now. If I'm in a backslidden state, but I believe that God is about to open up a door, could it be that God could be waiting on you to come back and love him fully? Could it be that God hasn't blessed you because you're not willing to sacrifice it all for him? Could it be that you are more concerned about men and their faces? Could that be it? I um, made some decisions you know, I've made a lot of decisions, but I made some decisions that probably a lot of people looked at and it, it looked strange to them. But when God tells you to do something, I believe him. I'm that girl he does not play with. Right? He don't play with me. Like some people, they can get five tries, six tries, seven, eight, nine. No, I'm not that girl. Right? I know how the Lord talks to me. So what you have to do is you have to get your ear gate from being on the phone all day, from, you know, ripping and running, get to a quiet, quiet place and say, God, how do you talk to me? God, how do you talk to the inner me? God, how do you, how are you revealing what you need me to do next? God, what do you want me and my family to do? God, what do you want to say to me and my family in this season? And how am I supposed to hear you? Right. God talks to you in multiple different ways. People, places, things. You have to learn. How does God talk to me? What is God saying to me? And the thing is, God doesn't move. If you have if you heard him once before and you no longer can hear him, that means you got out of place. That's a word for somebody. I felt I felt a glory on that. You're out of place. If you don't hear him like you used to. If you haven't been visiting with him, talking to him, it's a conversation, right? Like, like I like to call it a dance. You know how you talk to God, right? And you should, and you should start talking to him. And you know what? Just tell him, God, I need to know that this is you. So if I would have went back to that relationship that was not a God relationship, it was a counterfeit in, in disguise, Right. If I would have stayed in that cycle in that season, I would have been another situation, another sad Sally. Right. Because we were not good together. Absolutely not. <laughs> and it was not God's will for my life. That happened because I did not listen to him the first time when he told me the, the real instructions. I looked at signs. I ignored the signs. 
So then what happens is the situations came, right? So you have to say, Lord, what is it that you need me to learn? Why haven't I had a breakthrough? And see, some of your family is waiting on you just to take that first step. Maybe you're the one that's supposed to write the blueprint. Some of your children, they're waiting on you to write the blueprint. I hear it all the time. I don't want my kids to go through this. I don't want my kids to go through that. Well, what are you doing? Right? Y'all, for some of you don't know, um, you know, as a minister, I... Um, would start off as a youth minister for years and years and years. And I love my, you know, they're still my babies. I love them, right? Now I got a lot of young adults, right? But one thing that I, I always learned is I looked at it twofold. The kids would, the children would come to me. They're like, pastor, pastor, my mom and I listening to me. My parents aren't doing this, right? And then I would, you know, talk to the parents, of course, because I believe in accountability and I would always talk to the parents and keep an open, open line of communication with them. And the one thing that there was the commonality, I would look at and say, you know what? Children are children, but we have to train them up in which they shall go. Right. But as as parents, we have to make sure that we're willing to make this not only make those sacrifices, but really able to be transformed. So our children don't have to go through what we went through as children. Yes, stay in their place and yes, be respectful. But also as parents, we have to make sure that we turn our hearts to that you turn your hearts to God. When you think about an open door opportunity and you think about, you know, gas is good, right? Everybody's high five because gas is good. OK, we've seen it. But you have to really get a plan and get a blueprint. I would tell everybody I tell now this is me. This is me. I know entrepreneurship is not for everyone, but I say if you want to open door, sometimes you got to create your own door. Right. What are, what are you saying, LaShonda? You don't you don't have to go in, you know, beg for opportunity or beg for a pay increase when God has given you that ability to produce wealth. There are some of you you're waiting on that open door, but you won't close that door. You leave a crack. You leave a crack and you don't want to do that. That's a dangerous place because critters come in. Right? Pythons can come in when you leave a crack. My goodness. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Say amen in the comments. Right? Have you ever been there where you say, you know what? Mm, I'm just going to have a backup plan. Well, me and my husband, I thank God, you know, when we started our business, we didn't have a plan. We just knew one Look, I want to help the body. I want to help educate people because I was frustrated. I thought, nobody knows this. Now, if I can go ahead and we can learn this information and teach people, surely, God, you can meet the need. Hallelujah. So you never want to leave that door open if God tells you to shut the door. That is the wrong thing, right? So if you leave that door open, what happens? Critters come in. Listen, dust comes in, hallelujah. People start peeping in, wondering why is your door open. Don't worry about my door. Y'all, I'm getting, listen, I feel, and I said, I would, look, don't worry about, listen, you worry about your door over there. My door over here, we're going to serve the Lord. My door, this is going to be a praise and worship door. This door over here, listen, we're going to do what God tells us to do. Don't look at your neighbor door and wonder why their door is built of gold or their door is glass or their door is built of, of bricks. Listen, or their door is built of solid wood. When God is telling you to look at your door and walk through it. And sometimes what God wants to do, he don't, not only wants you to walk through your door, he actually wants you to teach others how to build doors. See, sometimes people get so discouraged because they feel like they're behind. Right. I hear that all the time. I'm behind. I'm behind. Could it be that the Lord has raised you up? Maybe God is giving you and building your faith right now because he wants to make sure that you got a, a secure door, a solid door. Right. And that your door is not built out of thumbtacks. Come on, somebody. Right. Your door like like. OK, I'm going to just tell y'all, you know, when you go to the cut the door like I like I've been there. Right. Real talk where we had the sheet hanging up. Okay, like that type of door, 
God doesn't want you to have a flimsy door. He wants you to have a solid door, a foundational door, a door that will not only bless you, it will bless your children's children's children. Hallelujah. That type of door. I'm talking about that type of mantle. Right? I'm talking about that fresh opportunity. And literally, God wants to saturate you with fresh, fresh opportunities. And sometimes what God wants you to do, do, he wants you to open your door, walk through your door, and shut your door right behind you. That's not selfish if the Lord told you to do it. Right? Everybody, everyone hasn't paid the price. Mm -hmm. They haven't paid the price. One of, one of my... Um, you know, one of my mentees, I was encouraging her and um, I was telling her, she was like, I'm ready to go global. I'm ready to do this. I said, well, you're ready to go global, but I need you to do some things. You got to get first things first done. You got to get your website. Make sure all your links work, right? Make sure you have a graphic team because you can literally have one idea. You blow up supernaturally overnight. And if you don't have enough uh, information, tools, inventory to handle that, your door going to be shutting your face. They're going to say, come back through this door and go back and start over. And see, that's why some people have to start their door over. Because you never really got, you never got delivered or healed from the molestation. You never got healed because, you know what, he walked out on you. She walked out on you. They laughed at you. Listen, you never got healed, like really, when, the, when you got laid off, when they fired you, when they laughed at you, when they talked about you. So what happens is, you get in a revolving door. That's good. Praise the living God. A revolving door, like a circus, right? You're going places, but it's, it, you're not going places, but you're going around and around and around. Same door. You go out, looks the same, go back in. Go out, looks the same, you go back in. You definitely don't want that to be what's manifesting in your life. I'm excited. Guys, I wanted to come on real quickly, just chat with you. Um, on Thursday, I got my dates together. My team, praise God for my dream team. Listen, y'all know my itinerary is it, lit. Praise God, right? But um, this year, I will, well, this week, I will be in uh, Wednesday. I'll be teaching at Next Level Christian Center. Uh, we will be teaching, uh, y'all know I deal with taxes. Listen, I'm that kingdom taxes tax teacher, right? So we'll be teaching about that um, on on Friday. I will be on the radio, so you need to. I want to say it's with the Spirit Radio, but you can actually um, go to my itinerary on LashondaGary.com. And then on Saturday, I actually um, one of my mentees is having a conference as well. Um, so a mall. Um, a message of love ministries, and then the following week I will be in. Houston, Texas or Spring, Texas um, at the Birthday Bash giveaway um, or give back. So with uh, Pastor Patricia. So I'm so excited. Y'all, you know, excuse me. I have a lot of dates, but we thank God for it. Um, we're so excited. I cannot wait to connect with you all. Um, I feel that and I really believe that this is one of the greatest seasons. Um, you can walk through some new doors. You literally can God will use you in a unique time and a unique season to really walk through that door. One of the greatest things I did was walk through a door and have no regret. Right? I walked through that door. I said, Lord, you know, for you, I love you. I will do anything for you, God. And when I, I, I like to identify my God as Yahweh, as God with us, as Emmanuel, as a living Savior, as a risen King. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Mekadesh. That is my God, right? And when I told God that, what God did was, he said, okay, daughter, I see that you are mature enough to handle what comes with those doors. There are some of you, you may take the persecution personal. There are some of you, you left certain circles. You walked out of certain seasons. Listen, you said, listen, God, didn't, he's, listen, he's taken my family to another place. And because of that decision, people may look at you strange. They may say certain things, but I want to encourage you and let you know if God tells you something and God has opened a door for you and God has transitioned you through that door, then that settles it. And that should be enough. And if it's not enough, that person is not God in your life. Do not allow anyone to distract you because God wants to open up new doors, greater opportunity, 
greater manifestation, greater revelation, greater healing for you and your family. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that, say amen. Say amen. Say amen. <clears throat> Y'all, I'm excited. Now, you know your girl is fired up. Listen, your girl fired up because I just know some great things are coming. Some great, great things are coming. I see them, uh, my team, praise God for the dream team. They're giving me my all my information so I can make sure I tell y'all uh, everything. Hey, Taryn, how are you, woman of God? How are you? Blessings. Hey, Lady Marsha, how are you? Grace and peace. Who else do we have on? Say hello, y'all, so I can say hello. All right. Hey, Dr. Torsha, how are you, woman of God? Hello, blessings, blessings, blessings. Have y'all registered for the Dream Build Success Conference yet? We're already selling. Um, I think I have 12 vendors uh, seats left. That's it. Uh, we're so excited. I believe that God is going to do something supernaturally. If you have not had a chance to register, you definitely want to register. As you know, we sell out. We sell out. Hello, Miss Gidry. How are you? Hello, Mr. Alexander. Um, how are you? Grace and peace. Hello, Lady Regina. How are you, Minister Regina? Grace and peace. Grace and peace, woman of God. Lovely. How are you? Blessings. Hey, Ray D. How's it going? But I believe that... Uh, this year is going to be the year of the shift. We are really shifting some great things, but I cannot wait to connect with you. Guys, until next time, my name is LaShonda Gary. This video will probably be on my YouTube channel, so you can go and watch my YouTube channel or go to LaShondaGary.com forward slash success TV. You can actually catch us um, or catch me on the, on the podcast. Until next time, guys, grace and peace. Hey, Miss uh, Mae Smith, grace and peace, woman of God. Talk to y'all soon.